2024 real estate predictions from the Bald Brothers team. You are listening to Home Sellers Advantage. I'm Aaron Zapata, your co-host. And I'm Todd Anderson, your other co-host. We are the Bald Brothers team at Impact Properties, and we are here to give you the Home Sellers Advantage. You can find us online at www.baldbrothers.tv. Again, that's baldbrothers.tv. Or you can call us at 833-305-BALD. That's 833-305-2253. Give us a call today. Happy New Year, Todd. Happy New Year, Aaron. You know, it's been a couple of weeks since you and I have seen each other. It's been a couple of weeks and a lot has happened. We've had two holidays. Two holidays. And we're into a brand new year. Brand new year. Brand and new in year. fact, the last episode that we dropped on our YouTube channel, which is the same one that you heard here on the radio, that was quite the exchange that was going oh, on yeah. there. We had, we had a spicy reaction. That's right. That. So <laughs> we were talking about you know, 2024 laws that, that impact landlords. And yeah. so we had a lot of people that went on there and were commenting back and forth. From both sides. We yeah. had uh, from people who, who are renters, and uh, we had people who have been landlords. And, uh, you know, I think it should be said that um, not all renters are, are derelict and irresponsible. No, and some not, are great. And not all landlords, certainly not all. In fact, most landlords are not money-grubbing, greedy uh, what's a, 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 a exactly? Yeah, you like, just fill in the blank. Whatever you want to. The you're Donald the Donald Duck character, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> I, I said like diving into the, the right, right. pool of coins, which right. would really hurt. By the way. By the way. Yes. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of commentary on that, and uh, you know the the term landlord um, is a little misleading because it comes from a feudal system, doesn't it? Where those of of nobility were the ones who owned the land. And there was such a separation between the classes of society, but right. that's not really the way it is today. No, and in fact, a, a great landlord is going to work in tandem mm -hmm. with the tenant. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's unfortunate that there are the bad tenants out there that give a bad name to the rest of you. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes for the landlords. There are yeah. scum lords out there that basically true. don't take care of the properties, and that makes a bad reputation for the rest of you and, who are landlords and, that are good ones. And there should be laws. Yeah. to protect renters. So we don't ever want to be in a position where we think that that should be, not be the case. Yeah. Uh, but the fact is, um, some of these laws that have been passed yeah. have had a significant impact yeah. on the affordability of housing in California. Yeah, and in fact, it was interesting to watch some of the comments from the, land, from the tenants who were basically saying to the other tenants that were commenting, look, if there are tenants that don't pay, that don't, that do all this terrible stuff, that's bad for all of us. Mm -hmm. We all pay the price. And, and that kind of goes the same way. Like when you don't have a great relationship with everybody where you have a reasonable rate and you have a reasonable landlord and you're working together, yeah, you're going to have pain and, and, and conflict. Yeah. Uh, I am a landlord. I, I have a rental yeah. and I've got a fabulous tenant and they take care of the property and I take care of them. And so it's a great working relationship. Yeah. But there are some that just are in it for the money. But here's what I've learned is that landlords who don't take care of the properties by raising rent, you know, year after year, not in huge increments, but slowly, if you don't raise the rent year after year to increase the cost of, of living there, then that landlord is not left with any money to put back into mm -hmm. the property. Yeah. And then the overall property ends up looking bad. Yeah. And then you have a distressed property. Of course, you have low rents, but you got a terrible property you're living in. Yeah. And so you don't want that to be the result. You know, most most landlords uh, or I, a lot of landlords are just simple mom and pop investors. They are. They're having a, a property as another stream of income. Perhaps they don't have anything for retirement. This is their right. future. Uh, but when you make things difficult for landlords, they leave California. And what do they do? Sometimes they have to sell to larger corporations. And that's where you have perhaps that disparity in terms of uh, the types of landlords that you have. But hey, that's just kind of a review of last week's. But we're talking this week about... 2024 projections in the real estate market. And by the way, if you're just tuning in, this is Home Sellers Advantage. Home Sellers Advantage. We are the Bald Brothers team. And uh, we actually can be reached at 833-305-BALD. That's 833-305-2253. You can also find us online at baldbrothers.tv. We encourage you to go there. There's a lot of information there. And you can find us online. 
And we would like to thank our sponsors when you're over there. Take a look. But we have got Beacon Escrow and Crosswalk Mortgage, great partners with us in this show, also in working with our clients. So we're just grateful for them. So take a look when you go to baldbrothers.tv. That's right. 2024 predictions. Hey, here we go. I've, we're I've, back. I've got a dad joke for you before you move on. Okay. Okay. I go apologize ahead. ahead of time. Okay. Uh, this is one that I got from a game that was given to me uh, for Christmas. It was a game called uh, Dad Joke Face Off. One of the Are best. There really that many dad jokes? Oh, that there's they can a lot make a of game them. out of it. Okay. It's wonderful. Okay. It's probably the best gift I've received. Okay. So why did 2019 not like 2020? Because they got in a fight in 2021. <laughs> Okay. Now, th that year, it, it's three years later, but... Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Great. And that's a little over my head, so I'm not sure. I'll probably get it, it skimmed later. It the top of your yeah, bald I'll, head. I'll probably get it later. <laughs> uh, and if you guys could help me out, comment. You know, All right. Do whatever. I promise Save that me. will be the last belt <laughs> uh, dad uh, joke for problem. this episode. Oh, yeah, for, for this, this episode. episode. Okay. Maybe one per episode. <laughs> okay. All right, hey, let's get to it. Our okay. listeners are waiting. Let's quit wasting time, 2024 guys. predictions. Number one. Number one. Home prices will go up. up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And, and that seems like a gimme. It seems like, a, like, hey, every realtor tells you home price is going to go up. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Over time, yeah. of course, home prices will go up. Even when they take a drastic dip like they did in 2007, 2008, today they're higher than they were back then. But there are times in which home prices do dip. And we just right. saw this recently we when did. the interest rates skyrocketed all of a sudden. Went from like 3.5% to 8 Yeah. Or so seven. what happened to the, the like home prices? Months. They just, they went down. They we did. saw a steady decline in home prices for a period of time. And we were selling properties at that time. And it was like pulling teeth just to get the buyers to look, get the buyers to look at them. Yeah. In fact, we were representing buyers at the same time. And mm -hmm. you could get... Ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars in concessions yeah. from sellers that just needed to sell. Yeah. Well, that day's gone. We don't see those concessions That's gone. anymore. Yeah. No. Uh, and and that day is gone because of number two and number three that we're about to get into. That's right. So what's number two? Aaron? Number two is that we believe that mortgage interest rates will stabilize and remain consistent in that six percent bracket. Yeah. Somewhere between six and seven percent, I think, is going to be the going rate. For this year. Now, a couple of years ago, someone would hear that and they said, oh my goodness, that's so high. But hey, we're coming out of a period where we were at 7 8%. So to come down to 6% and to try to stabilize right. around there is is a good thing. It's it's good for the housing market. No, it's not. Uh, we're not going to be seeing those 25 3% interest rates anytime soon. I was nope. talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago who wanted to know, hey, when are we going to be back down there again? I told them, don't hold your breath. If you're waiting to buy until you see those interest rates, you will probably be waiting for quite a while. And so stabilizing at 6%, uh, it's a good sign. It is. In fact, I ran that poll on Facebook and I asked people, what was the interest rate when you bought your first property? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people chimed in. Some people had these 3% rates. Some people had four. A majority of the people had six, seven, eight percent We even had some in there that chimed in at 12%. Mm -hmm. The highest I think I saw was 18% for a first yeah. mortgage wow. and so tr first trustee mortgage. And that's not the days anymore. Of course, we're not at the 17, 18%, but it does make 6% seem normal. Yeah. And in fact, it is normal. Mm -hmm. And I think buyers have decided that if this is normal, it's time for me to buy. Which brings so us guess to what? point number three. Point number three, that's a perfect segue. Point number three, prediction number three. Have you ever written a segue? No, I haven't, but uh, I don't want to dr uh, drive off the edge of a cliff. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> okay, perhaps it's morbid. <laughs> okay, number uh, okay. three. Number three, uh, more buyers will enter or re-enter the market. Uh, yeah. So we're going to see more buyers entering the market. A lot of those buyers are, are waiting. Uh, a lot, And the reason I said re-enter is a lot of those buyers were ready to, they were in the market back when interest rates were really low. And as soon right. as those interest rates rose up, they exited the market. But they I'm haven't, here. they haven't gone away. Nope. They've just been sitting by waiting for an opportunity to re-enter. Right. And so now with the stabilizing of some of these interest rates and understanding, okay, this is basically the new normal, mm -hmm. they've realized either we buy or we don't. So a lot of those buyers are re-entering the market. And this really makes points number one, two, and three really a package deal. It does. Because more buyers in the market, less homes still for sale. Right. Prices go up. Well, and let's, let's face it. It's expensive to buy and to own a home here in Orange County. It really is. It's expensive. However, when you are looking at homes in some of the other parts of the country, sometimes it's actually cheaper to own than it is to rent. 
but not here. And so when we see uh, rental prices continuing to increase and move up, we are seeing that the price gap difference between a rental and an owning uh, situation is, is, is diminishing. Yeah. So anytime that gap diminishes, and, and that helps, of course, when the interest rate comes back down, it's just like, oh, I can afford to buy a house now. You have buyers that jump back into the market. Mm-hmm. That's right. And right now at the beginning of the year, any buyers that delayed for the fourth quarter of last year, they always jump back in. Yeah. And this time of year, we always have a frenzy mm-hmm. of, of buyers that are eager and active and ready to buy. Yeah. So I think we're going to see that continue this year. Number four. Number four. Now, this one might seem like a strange one, but there is a connection, and that is gas prices will stay low. Yes, exactly. You know, gas prices, coincidentally, during election years, and this is an election year, Mm -hmm. always seem to come down. Yeah. It's always great news. Yeah. And, And I think that it has a direct correlation with home prices and to the housing market because we as... Californians, we love our cars. Mm -hmm. We live and die by our vehicles. We almost all have one or two or one and a half. And we just have this need and desire to drive cars. And because of that, we have a direct sense Mm -hmm. when we're filling in our gas tank. We're filling up our gas tank. We can feel it at the pump, they say. Mm -hmm. You can feel the pinch. So if prices are coming down on gas prices, we feel a little better. We yeah. feel like we have a little more money to spend. Mm-hmm. The budget is going a little bit further. Yeah. And so when the budget can go further, we know that perhaps we can now afford to buy a house. Yeah. And you were saying something too before we started this that yeah about like how far where people choose to buy how, and sell. Yeah, how far people are going to be willing to drive to go to work. Hey, when ca- gas prices are lower... Driving 30 miles to go to work, that's reasonable. That's something I can do because, hey, it's not going to cost a whole lot. And if I can have a bigger home by living in the Inland Empire versus living in South Orange County, I'm going to do that. But when those prices are high, you really feel the pinch. And and, uh, then when people are looking to buy, they're going to be looking to buy closer to where they work. Right. Yeah. And so that's going to change where people choose to buy and sell. That's right. Um, So, yeah, it has a direct impact on the housing market. Number five, but before we go to number five, let's just remind people that they're listening to the Home Sellers Advantage here on the radio or on our podcast or on our YouTube channel. You can find out more about us, the Bald Brothers team, at our website at baldbrothers.tv. That's baldbrothers.tv. Or you can give us a call. We do have a 24-hour call center that answers all calls that come in. And uh, so it'll be answered live. It will not be Todd or myself, but we will call you back. And that is 833-305-2222. Five, three. Again, yep. that's 833-305-2253. And uh, give us a call. Yep, that's 833-305-BALD. And we always tell you, hey, we can't guarantee you a bald person will answer the phone, but we can guarantee you a bald person will return <laughs> call the back. call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number five. Number five. Now, this one might seem... Uh, Confusing to some people because we hear so many different things depending on what you're listening to and what you're experiencing, but the economy will remain strong. And that's interesting because you and I and our neighbors and our family members Mm -hmm. may completely disagree (laughs) with that. That's for sure. Based on how many dollar bills are in our wallet Mm -hmm. or in our bank account. But from a political standpoint, always during an election year, the numbers that are reported on the mainstream media and other places always show the highlights of the economy. Mm-hmm. And so the resounding message that we're going to get throughout this year as an election year as we roll into November is that the economy is good. Yep. Unemployment's down. Jobs are up. Mm-hmm. People are spending money. Mm-hmm. Interest rates are low. Gas prices are low. People are traveling. So we're going to hear that message over and over. And for the most part, I think it's going to be true. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Generally, people aren't going to have that big of a sway in their pocketbook Mm -hmm. one way or another this year. But the message we're going to get is that Mm -hmm. things are great. Yeah. And that's the reason that that happens. I I don't know all the reasons, but one of the reasons is we know that a good economy is great for the incumbent. That's right. And if you go back four years and four years and four years, it doesn't matter who's in the white house. What's this, what's the saying? It's the economy, stupid, right? That's right. (laughs) So, so whoever's in the white house, always want to make it look good. Great election year economy. And that does have an effect on the housing market, whether it's really a good economy or a perceived good economy. Uh, the, the perception is really king when it comes right. to all of this. And when, when the economy is good or the perception of a good is, is a good economy, 
things will continue to move in the real estate market. But when the perception or things are not bad or or, are are bad, people will start to pull back on the reins a little bit. Right. They will. And so we just want you to know that perhaps you are not feeling, you know, that it's as good as it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and that's really going to lead us into our next point here, uh, because even though the messaging may be that everything's great and people want to move forward buying houses and everything like that. And if that's you, awesome. Uh, you know, if you're having a great year, that's so amazing. Uh, you should, you should mm-hmm. buy a house because prices are still going up. Yeah. But number six is realistically distressed sales mm-hmm. will rise. Yeah. You know, credit card debt is now at like 24% interest rates. On interest those, rates. On yeah. The, in, on those interest credit cards, rates. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, and credit card debt is at the all time high in our country. That is an insane interest rate. It 24%. is. 24%. Right. Wow. And so you could carry a balance of like $4,000. Mm-hmm. And if you think about most people's Christmas or one car repair or something, you know, it's not unheard of or uh, unthinkable to, you know, be in a bind where all of a sudden you have a $4,000 balance on your credit card. Mm-hmm. The interest on that by itself is is over 100 bucks a month. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, 2% a month, yeah. And if you're on a, a limited budget, 100 bucks a month goes a long ways. Yeah. And so if you get into a bind and all of a sudden you can't pay that credit card and you're paying this interest, it just it's a downward spiral mm-hmm. and it's like a snowball. It just it just yeah. gets bigger. And so I think we're going to see people that own homes that are now in trouble financially mm-hmm. and they're going to need to sell. Yeah. And I think we're going to see more of that this year than last year because of how high the interest rates have gone for auto loans and for credit cards. Yeah. Yeah, and we've talked a little bit about this in previous episodes, and we yeah. shared some of our experiences. And that, uh, so that's a willful um, selling of a property, a yeah. selling of a home, a distressed yeah. home. So I'm going to sell the home because I, I'm in a financial position where I really need to. It's my best and only option. And by the way, we've said in previous episodes that if that is the case, we recommend that you sell your home and don't let it get to number seven in our list of predictions is that there will also be an increase in foreclosures. Yeah, we've seen an increase in the preliminary filings Mm -hmm. for foreclosures. Uh, If you own a house, it goes through a series of things. There's notice of default, then there's notice of trustee sale, and there's the trustee sale. And so there's been a number of increases of those. It's not significant. It's not a a thing that's going to move the needle so much that the whole real estate market is affected. Yeah. But we are seeing it increase pretty quickly. Yeah. Now, we hadn't seen it increase because at, at the time, people there was so much equity in people's mm-hmm. homes. The property values had gone up so much that mm-hmm. we didn't see the rate of, of uh, short sales and foreclosures that we had seen in previous markets. But we're starting to see that resurgence of foreclosures. And, and um and let's face it, we've talked in previous episodes that a lot of the home sales are going to come from foreclosures and distressed properties because a lot of those homeowners, if they have a loan balance on their home, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're going to be reticent to actually sell their home because they don't want to have a higher interest rate when they repurchase their home. That's right. So um, moving on from that, we're going to go to number eight, which is the exodus from the mass California. Exodus. Exodus. You know. Movement of the people. Okay. Okay. Keep singing. <laughs> you might lull you our to Bob audience to sleep. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> no, actually, I didn't. Exodus know from California. We've we've done previous episodes, and they've been hot hot topic Super episodes. Popular. Yeah, people yeah. like to talk a lot about people fleeing from California. Hey, and and somebody commented recently. Hey, there's people moving to California. Yeah, there are people moving to California, but right. there's a massive exodus from California. Yep. And, and the average tax return for the mm-hmm. person that leaves is over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I can't remember what the exact number was, but it was over a hundred. Mm-hmm. And the average tax return for the person moving to California is about seventy five thousand yep. dollars per year. And so even if you have people moving back, they're not replacing the tax revenue. And you should go back and listen to a couple of our other shows when we talk about the sixty eight billion dollar deficit. Yeah, that's a great show to go back and listen to. Yep. But we're going to see a continued exodus and it mm-hmm. always ticks up during an election year yeah. because people move for certain reasons. Mm-hmm. And when they hear messaging that they don't agree with, whether it be left or right, center, up or down, doesn't matter. If you have messaging that you don't agree with and you see that that's happening in your state, you're going to leave your state. There and is So there's a lot of Californians yeah. that are holding out hope that it's going to stay the way it was. And when they realize that this election year is not going to be any different, yeah. there are people who will be like, I'm done. I'm out. We're leaving. Yeah. Politics. There, there is an um, amazing amount of political rhetoric yeah. that happens on both sides yeah. of the coin. 
And and I've been talking about people leaving California since 2018. Yeah, yeah. Like that's when I started talking about it in my mm-hmm. social media. Uh, we created Facebook pages back in 2019 with mm-hmm. people leaving California. Now I see it like it's the hot buzz, like it's yeah. the hot button. I see other realtors all the time mm-hmm. uh, posting on their on their social media. Hey, people are leaving California. We should talk. Well, we've been talking about it, and we've helped dozens and dozens of family leave the state. Yeah. So if you're thinking about moving, we definitely want to uh, help you with that process. If you're thinking about staying, we'll love to talk to you about that as well. Yep. So that's number eight. Number eight. Number nine. Should we tell them who we are again? We should. Because Let's tell I have them who we, who we are. Yeah. <laughs> who are you? Who am I? Don't I don't know. I'm Aaron, I think. <laughs> we are the Bald Brothers team, and you are listening to Home Sellers Advantage. That's right. And uh, you can reach us, us the Bald Brothers. You can reach us at mm. baldbrothers.tv. Dot TV. That not is dot on, com. Not dot com. That is on the interwebs, baldbrothers.tv. And although we do have a .com website, if you go to baldbrothers.tv, click on the home, and you'll get us to to the .com website. Yep. Uh, baldbrothers.tv, you can also call 833-305-BALD. That's 833-305-2253. All right. Last two predictions here for our list of 10. All right. Number nine. Number An nine. Increase. Increase in the sales of inherited properties. That's right, because there were some property laws Mm -hmm. that changed last year. Yep. You used to easily be able to transfer that property tax basis. This is a huge one. Yeah, from one generation to the next Mm -hmm. without having the property tax reset. Mm -hmm. I am now seeing multiple investment properties, apartments, commercial buildings, number of homes where... People that have inherited large amounts of property are now opting to sell them because the property taxes are now making it unprofitable. Unprofitable. To and, own them. And if you've inherited a property and perhaps your your income is is not able to manage it, let, let, let's paint a picture. Somebody bought their property, $100,000, and they're paying their property taxes based off of that valuation yep. with incremental increases. Now the property is valued... million. That is a significant jump in property taxes. Now the beneficiaries are responsible for paying. Right. And in most cases, they're not going to want to handle that tax, especially if they're not living in the property. So they're going to choose to to sell. I mean, for those that inherited property that's completely paid off, Mm -hmm. they might keep it. Yeah, Because you can still squeeze out a profit if you're going to turn it into a rental or an investment Mm -hmm. property. Yeah. But for those that have loans on them and now have an increase and a reset of property taxes, that is going to drive sales. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to prediction number 10. Prediction number 10. Listen carefully. Audience, we would need you to hear this because this directly involves you. Our prediction number 10 is that you are going to call us to sell your home. That's right. That's right. Do it now. That's our prediction. (laughs) We want you to call us the Bald Brothers team. We have fun doing the show, but this is only an hour out of our week when we Mm -hmm. get to talk about these things. The rest of our time is filled with serving clients. Yeah. Uh, This morning, Todd and I went on a listing presentation. We're talking with a seller who needs to sell their smaller home, buy a little bit bigger one, but ultimately they're eliminating the stairs Mm-hmm. from their home. Mm-hmm. And that's a big process. It's going to take us months to work through that so they can ses- successfully sell their one home and buy another one and then move directly into it. So we want to be your resource yeah. for all things real estate. So whether or not you need a landscaper, housing help, or you need to sell, we want you to give us a call. Buying and selling a home is one of the most uh significant decisions you make in your life and most stressful most stressful and although we have a lot of fun we do also take our job and our duty and our responsibility to you very seriously that's right and so we would be delighted if you'd give us a call you can call us at 833-305-BALD that's 833-305-2253 or go to baldbrothers.tv and if you're listening to a podcast please leave us a five-star review we would love that and share these episodes you can like and subscribe on youtube and we will see you here next time god bless thanks for listening to the all things real estate show 
The Bald Brothers team is a licensed DBA of Impact Properties, Inc., licensed by the California Department of Real Estate number 01922671. Again, we do not give any real estate, legal, or financial advice. If you'd like to reach us, you can call us at 833-305-BALD, or you can reach us online at baldbrothers.tv.